Hello everyone, my name is Alex Young and I am a marketing event specialist with Beck Technology. I'm excited to welcome you to yet another fantastic webinar featuring Clark Construction Company. Today we'll be chatting with Allison Clark, Senior Estimator and Planner at Clark Construction Company. Allison has been with Clark Construction Company since 2016. Fun fact, Clark Construction was recently awarded five regional best projects awards and won award of merit to Clark projects in the region by ENR Mid-Atlantic. Welcome, Allison. Thank you. Before we begin, Allison, we wanted to take a second and um, allow you to give us a little bit of background on Clark Construction Company and your role there. Yes, thank you. So a little bit about Clark, like you said, I've been here since 2016. Um, I started as an estimating technician at Clark Construction and I am now a senior estimator and planner at Clark. Um, with that being said, though, before I joined Clark, I started in the field and operations because I knew it would be vital and important for me as an estimator to know a little bit more about um, construction and being able to visualize and build things at when I became an estimator. Um, so Clark has three offices and we're in the process of um, opening a fourth. We have one in Lansing, one in Auburn Hills, and then one um, in Alpena. And then hopefully um, we are opening one in our Grand Rapids location too. So we are only um, doing projects in the Michigan region right now, unless there is a client that we, um, you know, have a great relationship with and they say, hey, Clark, we are wanting to do a project in Kentucky, do you mind traveling down there for us? Um, we do have a self-performed team as well. Um, so we do general trades, um, drywall and studs. So with that being, with that division, um, we have a total of about 300 employees and we're at about 400 million this year um, in our revenue and sales. Wow, that's incredible. It sounds like you all have been very busy. Yes. Yes, as I'm sure everyone else in the industry right now, what the market is doing. Definitely. And I know a lot of folks who are here with us today um, are excited to hear more about how you all have been able to uh, maintain a balance while staying so busy. Um, and thank you so much for a little bit of background about yourself and Clark Construction Company. Um, so just a, a brief refresher for everyone. Um, today, we are going to be talking lean estimating and utilizing shortcuts to success with Allison. Um, and we can get right into um, some of the conversation topics that we're hoping to get to today. And um, with that, um, our first topic is around um, new challenges. So Allison, as the industry has encountered new challenges and business practices have shifted, um, could you give us an idea of how you have re uh, how you have recently reviewed estimates as they go out the door? Um, just kind of a day to day, what that looks like for you. Yeah, so I guess a little bit of background um, in our pre-construction department. We currently have 15 um, individuals, varying, um, you know, positions where we have estimating technicians, estimating planners, and then senior estimating planners. And then Gary is our director of pre-construction. So our process right now is that, um, you know, I'm working on project. I have people helping me on these projects and Gary is then reviewing these as these go out the door before we present them to our you know clients um, another method that we have kind of um kind of instilled in the company is to do peer reviews obviously gary is one person we have 15 individuals each of us having multiple projects so that is a huge workload for gary to review each of these estimates some could be due the same day so one of the things that we've said is hey um, you know, Gary's tied up. Why doesn't my coworker Bill or Chad or whoever um, take a look? You know, open our eyes up to look at the takeoff, look at unit prices, look at market market conditions to kind of help with that workload. Um, the other great thing about Destiny Estimator is that previous to um, us getting Destiny Estimator, which it's been about four years now. Um, we were using a software and we had to print out our estimates and our PDFs um, for Gary to review. Now that we have team estimating, I can, I can be in the estimate, 
um, you know, the people that are helping me, my coworkers that are helping me do my estimate, do that project, we can all be in it and Gary can review it as we're still working in it, making our last minute changes. Whereas previously, you know, he had to wait until we were completely done and then review it. And then we had to go back in and make our changes. Whereas he can, you know, if he's communicating with me and say, hey, Allison, looks like your unit price might be a little low on this. I'm in here looking at it. I'm going to say, hey, why don't you just change it while you're in that? I'm finishing something else up. So right. that team aspect, that ability to have multiple people in the estimate out once has allowed us to kind of streamline our process, make it a lot more effective and efficient for that review process before it's going out the door. Yeah, that's so important. I uh, really appreciate you being able to highlight that process. I think that that will resonate with a lot of folks. Um, I know that a, a lot of our, our customers um, beside you all really enjoyed that aspect of Estimator and being able to, to share the, the load, if you will, while you're working on um, so many different projects at once and um, having you know that the ability to review and, and have the team aspect is so integral to be able to um, you know to make things more efficient and to make things a little bit easier on on you all as you're working on um, a plethora of, of different initiatives. So um, yeah, really appreciate you highlighting that 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 team that team estimating aspect of of estimator um, and going into that a little bit in the day to day day to day aspect. Um, so, you know, as you and I have chatted before, we know that all estimators work just a little bit differently. Um, and this is such a huge topic for a lot of folks we know in the industry and in the pre-construction industry is, is the idea of maintaining a work-life balance. Um, you know, besides having the, the, the team aspect of, of estimating come into play, um, what other ways are you all at Clark or what other um, ways have you seen um, folks in the industry practicing um, better work-life balance techniques while, while maintaining the same level of work that, that you all see? Yeah, so this year for 2022, um, we at Clark, we have like a company theme every year. And this year our company theme is perf uh, professional, personal, and organizational health. Um, so that kind of resonates. Um, it resonates a lot with me um, as I'm a new mom. So that I have that, um, you know, along with my professional career. And with what you're saying, you know, the lean aspect of it and the work-life balance, because we are all so busy right now, um, is making sure that we have a software program that is not, we are not working for the software program. The software program is working for us. Um, right. And so we've created a committee um, it's our lean estimating committee. There's four of us in our department of 15 that are on there just talking about brainstorming about different techniques and different topics, um, learning how one person might do one aspect in the pre-construction process, how someone else might do it some a, a different way. And what we're doing is weekly trainings and topics and discussions because although us four may come up with what we believe to be a best practice or work the best um, within the software or just the pre-con process in general. Um, I think I've noticed as we've been, you know, doing these tra weekly trainings that although we think we're doing something the best or the most efficient or, or quickest way, that other people have different, you know, we all think differently. So they may be doing something that I wouldn't even thought to do it that, you know, think to do it that way. Yeah. Um, so it allows us to kind of collaborate, um, talk together as a group and come up with what truly may be um, a better best practice. You know, we may come to the table as the committee and say, hey, here's what we believe to be the best practice. But as we're doing that training, you know, the coworker may raise a hand, but I do it this way. Don't you think this way works a little bit better? So we're just making sure that we're doing these trainings and we're doing these collaborative refreshers um, yep. throughout different pieces of software. Because the other thing about, um, you know, software and technology as it changes, and um, we know right now that technology is just so rapidly changing that not everyone can know everything in different, whether it's estimator or not. Um, yep. There's just so many tools available in technology 
that we all utilize it differently yeah. and making sure that um, we can, you know, find the best way to do something, the most efficient way to do something. Absolutely. Um, and just on the topic of that committee, was that something that stemmed from, you know, surveys that you all did internally, or was that something that you just noticed that there was a, a need, um, you know, especially nowadays as everyone is pulled a little bit, you know, in different directions and there's a little bit more strain on everyone. Um, certainly those types of committees are so important to be able to crowdsource that type of input and crowdsource that type of those types of tips and tricks to, to better do your jobs um, in, in respect to everyone's different positions. But um, can you share a little bit about how that committee was formed if you have that, you know, to yeah. share and and maybe other folks will take inspiration from that as well to do something similar if they already don't already have that within their own companies. Yeah. Um, so that committee um, came to be as a, um, a need for it. Um, we saw a need for it um, because as we had talked about previously with Gary, um, reviewing estimates as they go out the door kind of goes back to all estimators working differently and all estimators learning differently too. Um, sure. We felt that as Clark, we didn't have a deliverable that our clients were able to know that it all of these different deliverables, even though it was a different estimator, um, that they all came from Clark. We all were doing things just a little bit differently. Um, everything was looking a little bit different. So even though our reports were set up differently, you know, I may be less detailed than someone else. Someone else might be more detailed than us. So making sure that we were, all of our estimators created a product that matched our business model within um, Clark's pre-construction team. So that's kind of where it stemmed from is Gary was like, hey, your estimate looks like this, Allison. And, you know, this person's estimate looks like this. And they just they just don't look alike. So we need to figure out how can we do this better? And one of the things, one of the examples I'll give on that is um, in our line item descriptions, you know, we have our database of line items. Um, but footings and foundations was a major thing for us that was happening, like different people were estimating differently in the sense of, um, you know, we have our column pads in F4 versus the F3 and F2. Some estimators were adding the F2, F3, F4, others were not. Um, so some of ours were like really detailed, which is great when you come um, into a market like this, being able to change um, column pads on the fly, but we, said, hey, let's create a new WBS property that doesn't exist in the database. It's going to be a Clark-specific WBS property that's an item note. It's not going to show up in our report um, to the owner and the AE, but it's still there. So Allison can take a look at that and say, okay, here's all my F2 column pads. Here's all my F3 column pads. But then when I get the report printed, our line item is going to show up as column pads. So yeah, just to reiterate, that came from a need just based on um, us making sure we wanted to, you know, that our different clients were able to know where this deliverable and their products were coming from, what company. So important. Yeah, I appreciate you um, giving a little bit of light on, on how that committee came to be and especially a real life example of why it's so important to have um, those types of, of committees in place. Um, so speaking to lean estimating, um, and as we've already alluded to during this conversation, um, a great pre-construction team can literally save the life of a project through its creativity, um, its problem solving and analytical abilities, and its cost knowledge, most importantly. However, as a result of this being seen as a lower priority within a firm, they are often underfunded and asked to do more with less which can equate to very lean pre-construction departments. Allison, what are your thoughts on that particular statement? Yeah, so being in pre-construction, I'm sure we're all familiar with the term of pre-con. Um, that is just, you know, that happens all the time. But what I've seen lately with the market is that we are doing even more than we used to because of the different and ever-changing market conditions, whether it's supply chain issues, labor issues. Um, you know, previously I would say we had our, you know, schematic design, design development, construction develop our document phases, three different phases, you know, where you may have had some meetings in between each of those phases, design meetings. 
But now I kind of feel like our projects are one long process where you have your SD, DD, and CD deliverables from your AE team where we're estimating that. But in between, we have all of these meetings and coordination items because of some of the budget constraints that we're facing on these projects. So instead of three large um, pre-construction phases, we have one large pre-construction effort just because of and all the value engineering and budget restrictions that we are finding right now with um, the ever-changing market. So it's making us be even more creative than we are having to be already. Um, you know, as our title shows, we're estimators and planners. It's making right. that planning process of it so much um, more critical than it ever was before because we're having to find new ways to get the client's dreams that they want um, within these different budget and labor issues. So um, it's a lot, there's a lot more creativity and a lot more collaboration and meetings, I would say, up front than we ever have seen in the past. Yeah, um, no, that totally makes sense. And I think that that's, that's so important to the ever-changing environment that um, the pre-construction industry is in right now. Um, you know, you, you talk a little bit about achieving, um, you know, the, the client's dream aspirations of what a project should look like and what it should shape up to be. Um, are there any, you know, tips or tricks in terms of providing a little bit of, of realism or providing a little bit of, um, you know, what you can share about, you know, uh, you know, in, in, in so many words, a client project that you might have worked on um, or, or are working on where you've had to reevaluate and maybe take into consideration and anything that you can share with folks who might be facing something similar um, in terms of um, knowing that you have a timeline or certain constraints that you're working on, but still want to make it the best um, end result possible. What are what are some ways to be able to to set expectations and and set yourself up for success? So I would say a couple of things um, contribute to that is making sure that we're able to be adaptive um, mm -hmm. and making sure that we're able to um, you know not come to a meeting where we're just taking notes. I like to come to my meetings because we do have less time to do more. Um, right. Coming to meetings to make sure that I'm able to work live right then and there. You know, the owner throws out, hey, I want terrazzo floors instead of carpet or whatever. You know, I can go and sit in a meeting and do these live updates um, because I I don't have time to sit there and take notes, come back to the office, make the change. I'm able to make a lot of these changes right then and there in these meetings. So being adaptive and then also coming up with, you know, just a lot more communication between the architect um, and owners. Um, We've found on our projects that we're getting more and more alternates on our jobs. And so I always tell my clients and um, architects, it's better for me at the beginning of a project to start with a major breakdown. Say we're doing um, you know, a five-story building and we have different market sectors or business models in this building. It's easier for me to start super, super detailed than it is for me to create an estimate for you. And then you say, hey, oh, by the way, we need to break out this area, this area, and this area. You know, backtracking and doing that is just wasting their time and taking a lot more time. So I make sure to have our kickoff meetings right up front so that we're um, creatively thinking about things like, you know, how the owner is looking at different revenue streams, breaking that out in the estimate, um, different floors and doing that so that we're able to easily and quickly make changes for owners that way they can you know take away add and modify and so that it works with their budget makes total sense um that that concludes a lot of our questions that we had um for for this particular webinar allison your insight it has been incredible and we really appreciate um you giving some some um you know some insight into into what a data in the life looks like for you all and some best tips and tricks we do have a couple of questions um, that we're going to get okay. to um, and the first question is um, our team recently um, was reduced and we are in, encountering some increased um, bandwidth issues what is one way that we can um, avoid burnout it's this particular question so um for us i would say 
Yeah, that's one of, like I talked about our theme, professional and personal help. And unfortunately, some of it you're not able to control. If your team is reduced, um, some of that burnout is, is just going to happen as a result of that. Um, but I would say checking in with your employees, team morale, you know, whether they're struggling in the pre-construction process, we all know different projects are different. So I have a project here that may be going smoothly and I have another project that may be, you know, it's just not going good. I'm having issues with AE or owner or budget issues or design issues, whatever the case may be. So making sure to check in with your employees. How can other people help? Because I find myself sometimes I'm like, oh, I think I may not. know the best thing to do in this situation, but then keeping an open mind and as they have, you know, lessons learned that may be able to more help more quickly help you um, go through those different challenges and help you, you know, reduce that burnout mentality and keep morale up. Makes total sense. Um, our next question is, we know that you mentioned uh, team estimating and estimator, um, but do you have any other features that help you um, when um, in a lean estimating uh, situation is this question? Um, so yeah, we, though, Destiny Estimator is our main um, pre-construction um, software that we use. Obviously we have, you know, 3D modeling, stuff like that, but I would say Microsoft Teams um, is, you know, like a Zoom or whatever is helps majorly with, you know, lean estimating because prior to the pandemic, um, we were driving to meetings. They were face-to-face -face meetings. So that drive time, that whether it's an hour or half hour, that drive time took so much out of our day when I could have been, you know, taking a half hour or hour doing an estimate or take off or calling some contractors, what, you know, you can still do that piece of it on the road, but teams now, the virtual aspect of it, the hybrid situation, being able to work virtually um, when needed, I can have my meetings back to back. I can get a lot more done meetings back to back, Absolutely. but I don't have to spend an hour on the road um, and I can be doing other things in between. So I think that's one of the major things that I would say, other than software programs, is being able to do our meetings, design owner meetings virtually. Um, and the, I, I know different companies and different people have different opinions on that, but it helps, it helps get more done. We're eliminating that windshield time. Yeah, couldn't agree more, couldn't agree more. Um, that is... Um, those are all the questions that we have um, for you, Allison, today. Um, okay. I just wanted to thank our panelists, Allison Clark from Clark Construction Company, again today for chatting, lean, estimating, and shortcuts to success with us. Um, we really enjoyed being able to talk through all of the topics um, and appreciate your time today, Allison. Thank you. Um, and have a good day, everyone.